so George, you know, as you briefed last week on the zero day of, of Palo Alto's uh, vulnerability, now we are seeing a number of, de of different developments. Can you update us on what you're seeing, especially with the PanOS? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Keith. Um, yeah, there's been a, a number of updates since uh, since last week. Um, Crawl ourselves, we're, we're observing widespread exploitation of, of the vulnerability as, as we predicted would happen um, following the release of a um, public uh, proof of concept. Um, as with many of the vulnerabilities that we've been covering um, that affect many, many large organizations and, and security products, um, the, the vulnerability is, is fairly trivial to exploit um, and there's actually a number of uh, ways of doing so. There's a lot of technical detail in the report, but essentially um, the vulnerability has two parts, a path traversal vulnerability, um, which you can see at the beginning of that session ID string there um, that the threat actor puts in the cookie um, to uh, put a, a log in the, in the device telemetry um, uh, directory of the appliance. Um, that will create a file um, and then there is improper sanitization um, of the file name um, and uh, due to the way that those uh, telemetry logs are collected and, and sent um, the system command will be will be executed now palo alto um, have uh, released several updates to their advisory and, and if you're running these these devices we recommend checking that um, at least daily um, and they categorize the attacks into uh, four uh, four different levels uh, level zero um, are unsuccessful exploitation attempts we're seeing hundreds and, and thousands of those um, level one uh, where the vulnerability is being tested on the device. Um, the device was compromised. A zero byte file um, is, is created um, and is resident on the firewall. That allows a threat actor to access that file and receive a 403 instead of a 404 error, um, confirming that the device is indeed vulnerable. Level two, a file on the device is copied to a location um, accessible uh, with a web request. The file may not be um, subsequently downloaded. Um, that's uh, what um, Palo Alto say they are observing um, and some of the file names are, are included in the advisory there. Um, and level three, uh, which are signs of interactive command execution, um, which may include shell-based backdoors, um, introduction of code, downloading files and running commands. Um, here at Crawl, we're seeing all four of those um, and it's, it's very widespread and, and we assess that it's uh, being conducted by uh, several different threat actors. Additionally, Palo Alto um, released uh, updates uh, saying that the original workaround advice by disabling the telemetry service um, was not sufficient to protect the device. Um, although we haven't seen um, exploitation um, directly of, of using a, a different um, um, exploit path uh, yet, um, it is possible to exploit this vulnerability without using the, de the device telemetry path and relying on that service. Um, they subsequently released a new threat ID um, to uh, prevent against some of these attacks. So that's threat ID 95189 and 95191. Um, and according to Palo Alto, they are effective at blocking 90% of the attacks. Um, my understanding is these threat IDs look for um, both the um, uh, path traversal um, and the improper sanitization and the, the commands included in the file name. However, the best thing to do is to patch. The latest update that we're tracking, um, and this is uh, a, a rapidly developing uh, topic, um, is the reports that an open source project uh, called Gorilla um, may be the source of the path reversal vulnerability. The Gorilla project is vulnerable um, to that uh, path reversal, um, and a CVE is apparently being assigned. Hundreds, um, I think actually probably thousands of projects use the, the Gorilla sessions um, project, um, but the, the circumstances about getting code execution are almost certainly not going to be the same across those projects, although the path reversal does exist. It's how the, the Gorilla library itself is being implemented that, that causes the, the remote code execution. And one final thing to say um, just from, from all the stuff that we're seeing over the last week is if you have not patched um, as of um, the, the advisory date, so that's I think Friday the 12th uh, of April. If you did not apply patches um, over that weekend uh, and the, the, the mitigations when they, um, and, and you've just been relying on the mitigations, um, you should assume compromise um, and, and um, you know, get, get in touch with us and, and we can help with that. Um, 
but uh, also to just continue checking the, the Palo Alto uh, advisory because information is being added to that um, daily and, and sometimes hourly. And that's all from me, Keith. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. And as everyone can see, you know, Kroll uh, is considered an expert in this field. Uh, we do have uh, solutions for this. So if you do have any questions pertaining to the Palo Alto uh, vulnerability and how to fix it, um, our digital our digital forensics teams can and will uh, talk to you about this and what you can do to us to help out. So again, George, thank you so much. <clears throat>